Hello and a very warm welcome to this talk. Today we will be talking about macrocephaly or big head in children. Many times the parents are worried that their child has got a big head. Now how big is that problem? And what are the causes of a child having a big head? Let's dive in and talk about it. The medical term for big head is macrocephaly. And by definition, it means a child whose head circumference, which in medical terminology is known as occipital frontal circumference. That is the diameter of the head uh, around the occipital and the frontal bones of the skull. So if that is greater than the 97th centile for age, sex and ethnic origin, then it is known as macrocephaly. So it means a child whose head apparently seems to be bigger but it has to be plotted on a centile chart and only if it is greater than the 97th centile if you have seen a head circumference chart which has got an x-axis and a y-axis x-axis shows the age and the y-axis shows the diameters in centimeters so you have to take the age and you have to take the diameter by taking a simple measuring tape so this is a simple measuring tape so you put it around the uh, head of the child Take the circumference and then plot it on the head. So if it is falling above the 97th centile, which is the topmost curve on the head circumference, it is above that, then we call it macrocephaly. If it falls below that, then it is pseudo macrocephaly. I mean, apparently the child uh, seems to have a big head, but in fact, objectively, the child has got a normal head circumference. And this usually happens when the rest of the body. Is a bit small like uh, children who are malnourished or who are born with low birth weight because their uh, skeletal uh, and uh, muscular growth has been restricted the head apparently seems to be bigger in size so that why the parents think that their child has got a big head but in fact it's not a big head it simply looks like a big head because the rest of the body is small and if you plot the OFC occipital frontal circumference on the centile chart it would be within the normal limit but what if it is greater than the 97th centile? If it is greater than 97th centile, obviously that is macrocephaly. So a large head means that either the causes of this enlargement are in the cranial vault or the skull bones or inside the cranium or intracranial. So first of all, we will take the causes in the cranial vault. Now, a child who probably has got some issues with uh, chronic hemolysis or let's say he is suffering from some form of anemia in which there is chronicity and the bones are working hard because the bone has got marrow as well and that marrow has to do a lot of work to compensate for the uh, loss of blood. Then uh, certain uh, parts of the bone can start uh, functioning in the sense that their marrow starts producing more red blood cells. And skull bones are one of the bones where uh, this hemopoiesis can start, especially in chronic uh, conditions. Like for example, if a child is suffering from thalassemia, then uh, the hemopoiesis uh, starts uh, taking place in skull bones as well. So as the hemopoiesis starts taking place, the marrow expands. When the marrow expands, the bones expand. When the bone expands, so obviously the skull bones would enlarge. The child would have macrocephaly. Similarly, certain conditions in which there is problem primarily with the bones themselves. We call them skeletal dysplasia. There are so many conditions like for example dwarfism. Dwarfism is one condition in which there is problem with the skeletal bones. So these bones are, you know, fused prematurely, they are abnormal and there is an abnormal growth in those bones as well. So children, let's say with dwarfism or achondroplasia can have you know, large bones, especially the skull bones and obviously that leads to macrocephaly. Similarly, some children are born, uh, with, 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 are born with a big size. All the organs are large, including the bones. For example, Children born with backward Weidman syndrome or Sotos syndrome, they've got huge bodies. So these babies are born uh, with uh, 
they have, their birth weight is quite um, high. These babies have got like huge skulls, huge bodies. Obviously, they fall in the macrocephalic range. So skeletal dysplasias and chronic hemolytic conditions can give rise to, uh, you know, expansion in the skull bones and that child would have macrocephaly. So these are the uh, cranial uh, causes of macrocephaly. Then coming to intracranial causes. Inside the cranium is the brain along with its meninges. So any pressure buildup inside the brain, especially if it occurs within the first two years, that can actually cause expansion of the skull bones towards the outside and would lead to an increase in the diameter of the skull bones leading to macrocephaly. Most of the time, these are either congenital or acquired conditions with the brain that lead to obstruction of the outflow of the cerebrospinal fluid, leading to an accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid inside the uh, cranial cavity, leading to expansion of the skull bones. So the skull bones are displaced laterally, leading to an increase in the skull size or leading to increase in the head size, leading to macrocephaly. Now the congenital conditions in which uh, the CSF uh, can be increased like for example certain congenital infections in utero can affect the brain development like for example congenital toxoplasmosis, congenital uh, rubella syndrome, congenital cytomegalovirus infection, congenital HIV so on and so forth. So they can cause obstruction to the outflow of the CSF per se and that would lead to accumulation of the CSF and as it increases the, the brain actually gets stretched the skull bone gets stretched and the child has got macrocephaly. Some of the acquired conditions, like a child who's got meningitis or encephalitis, might develop like, you know, sort of an adhesions in the membranes post-infection uh, and that can also lead to obstruction, outflow of the CSF leading to macrocephaly. Similarly, certain congenital structural defects of, like for example, Dandy Walker syndrome or ulnar carry malformation, uh, they lead to obstruction of the outflow of CSF, leading to accumulation of CSF inside the brain, leading to increase in pressure, and obviously that leads to lateral di uh, displacement of the skull bones, leading to macrocephaly. Now, intracranial causes are mostly associated with neurological complications. These kids must be having some neurological symptomatology. Like these children who have got intracranial causes and have got big heads, they might be suffering from hypotonia. They might be suffering from delayed developmental milestones. So let's say a child who is seven or eight months of age is not able to sit, or they might have got sensory problems as well. That child might not be able to see. That child might not be able to hear. Uh, that child might be, uh, you know, not able to, um, you know, grasp on this. May not, may, may not be able to turn from side to side. Muscular weakness. So, those children who have got intracranial reasons for macrocephaly, they usually have got neurological symptomatology. And sometimes, the child is absolutely fine, though his uh, occipitofrontal circumference is above the 97th centile, but he hasn't got any chronic hemolytic problems, he hasn't got any skeletal dysplasias, he hasn't got any neurological symptomatology, and his brain is absolutely fine. These kids might be having what we call as familial macrocephaly. You need to ask their parents. They remember if they were told that they had big heads when they were small. This can run in certain families and kids can have apparently, you know, uh, big brains, but otherwise they are absolutely fine. So there are no hematological problems, there are no skeletal problems, and there are no neurological problems. That is familial. And that is usually, you know, transmitted genetically. So remember, in a nutshell, macrocephaly, true macrocephaly, where the bone, uh, the head circumference is greater than the 97th centile, might be caused because of extracranial, or where the problem is in the cranial vault, the skull bones, like for example, skeletal dysplasias, or chronic hemolytic conditions, uh, leading to expansion of the skull bones, or intracranial uh, causes which most of the times are caused by structural brain defects or by congenital or acquired infections. Again, the best way is 
that the doctor takes the occipital frontal circumference and if it is that is greater than the 97th centile that is macrocephaly and then he has to see whether the causes are in the cranial world or whether they are intracranial and as i said like from history if somebody has got like bone problems or somebody has got chronic hemolytic problems then you know that most probably the problem lies in the cranial world but if they are accompanied with neurological symptoms then obviously the problem lies inside the cranium and again there are different diagnostic modalities to further work up these things like for example in small infants you can use cranial ultrasound if they are less than six months of age or you can use ct and mri if they are older than that so i hope you have understood the causes of macrocephaly in this short video lecture if you still have got any questions or queries please put your questions down in the comment section below and i will try my level best to answer them as soon as possible if you have liked this video please share it with your friends and if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe and have a very good day take care and bye bye